morning, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you for coming this morning to the house of the Lord, and may God bless you as you have come. We also want to extend the same warm welcome to our internet audience that um, we're happy that you're linking up this morning to partake in the blessing that the Lord has for us here. And we're saying, like Moses said to Hobab, come down with us. The Lord God has spoken good things concerning us, and you will be blessed as you come with us. Um, normally, we have uh, uh, we we'll start our Sunday um, services with our Sunday school in the morning. Um, that is usually 9.30. You just missed out on that, but you're part of the service now that um, starts after the Sunday school. So come with us, as I said earlier on, and God will bless you. Um, in the afternoon, we normally have youth um, activities, and in the evening, we have prayer meeting. But this, uh, well, sorry, in the evenings, we normally have evening evangelistic revival service, but tonight we're just going to have a prayer meeting here, and you're welcome to be part of that prayer meeting, and God will bless you. We will now join our voices together to sing with the choir as um, the song leader comes forward to lead us. God bless you all. We're going to sing from my hymn book, CGS number 21. It says, press him, press him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. Our next hymn 486. When you start for the land of heavenly rest, yes. keep close to Jesus. Amen. That's what we are here to do this morning. May God help us to keep closer to Him. Amen.
Jesus help each and every one of us to keep close to him. Amen. Yes. 253 says, just as God who reigns on high, spake to men in days gone by. So the Lord is calling men today. Just as God in this sing a chorus that says shine Jesus shine shine Jesus shine
Jesus' name. A hymn before we pray is 671. Though the angry soldiers times of trouble, we will ask Brother Leto to please lead us in prayer. God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Ghost, Amen. our hope is in thee, Lord. Our trust is in thee. Our all is in thee. Our petition will present them before thee with hope and believing that our God is a wonderful God, that our God is a God that hears prayers, that our God is the unchanging God, the God of yesterday, today and forevermore, our Alpha and Omega. Even right now, come down and answer our prayer. Come down and hear our cry. Come down and hear our petitions, Lord. Diverse our needs, Lord. Diverse our situations. Lord, heal us all. Amen. All those who are going through difficulties, whether it's sickness, Lord, whether it's financial difficulties, whether it's strongholds, whatever it might be, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. We plead the blood of Amen. Jesus on all situations, Lord. And we trust and believe that even right now you can heal, Lord. Even right now you can deliver, Lord. Come down and deliver us. Lord, we put everything before thee, Lord. We present the preacher this morning, Lord. Anoint him with your precious blood. Oh, Lord, fill him, Lord, that we might receive your word pure from you, Lord, and let that word make a difference in our life. Send us home rejoicing. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We will now listen to the first special, and that will be followed by Bible reading, which will be taken by Brother Loreto, 
and then we'll have the last special before the word of exhortation that will be given by Brad Godwin. God bless you all. our Bible and scripture reading taken from the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10 to 20. The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. I'll read. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye been in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye, ye who sometimes were far off are made high, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. 14. For he is our peace, yes. for who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partitions between us. 15. 
having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to, for to make in himself of train one new man, for making peace. 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. 17. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. 20 and the last. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone.
to our reading text this morning, which was taken from Ephesians chapter 2. We want to read again verse 20. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I'd like you to also join me to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, yes. having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yes. Foundation for eternity. When we're talking of a foundation, we're talking of, in the physical, the builders, the architects, they know the meaning, the worth, the importance of a foundation. The irony is that foundation is little seen, little known, little cared about by those who eventually may come to inhabit that building. But nevertheless, it is probably the most important part of that building. Yeah. A foundation, easily forgotten, easily unappreciated. However, if there happens to be if there happens to be any issue that develops with that foundation, that whole building is in trouble. Whatever has been built on top, no matter how wonderful, how beautiful, how high, how mighty, how structurally fantastic, once there's a problem with the foundation, that building is in trouble. This morning, God would have us Think together on a foundation for eternity. A foundation. What is a foundation? Is that structural base that connects whatever it is you want to build to the ground, to the earth around it, to make sure that when those adverse times come, when weather takes its toll, when things happen, when life happens, that structure will still be sound. May God help our foundation Amen. that as children of God, we will have and keep and maintain our foundation strong. Amen. That is in the physical. If you want to know how serious the issue of a foundation is, you go and try and insure a house that has any issue with its foundation. You try and ring up and ask for insurance on a house that has subsidence or slippage or any issue with the foundation. You will, if you are lucky, if you are fortunate, you may get a few that will even bother to insure you at all. And then the price they will give you, you yourself will think, well, I'll probably use half of that to sort out the foundation myself. The foundation, very 
very structurally important. That is it in the physical. How much more when we take that in the spiritual? When we're talking of a spiritual foundation, like we heard in our lesson this morning, Israel, just as the Christians today, entered into a special relationship with God, with Jehovah, through God's almighty deliverance from Egypt. God took them out of Egypt. The impossible became possible. Weeping was turned to joy. Defeat was turned to victory. The brother who led part of the prayer on Friday said, it came to a point in Egypt, they couldn't even pray again. All they could be doing was, hmm. Hmm. I don't know if you've ever reached that place. <laughs> but if you've reached that place, you know what, what he was talking about. There comes a time in life when things happen. When it will test your foundation. And this is part of the reason why it is important to have a sound foundation. A foundation that will not only last for time, but will last for eternity. Yeah. May God help us. Amen. So Israel, they came out. They were starting on that journey. However, God who knows all about us, God who knows all about our frailties as human beings, knew that to finish joyfully, to finish victoriously, to finish to this, this journey to the promised land that they had promised them. They needed guidance. They needed direction. They needed ordinances, statutes, as a foundational basis to guide them as they were going through the wilderness. Deuteronomy 18.5 tells us that that wilderness, let's read it and open it together. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, where it were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. You see, God knew the way they were going. But remember, these children of Israel, had they ever gone that way before? Had they ever traveled that way before? Did they actually know their way? All they knew is, God has promised us, he's taken us to the promised land. He's taken us to Kenya. And they were rejoicing. And they were, they, they were jubilating, which was all well and good. But you see, just like that child, those of us who have children, especially the little ones, you're taking them, maybe you're taking them with you as you're going shopping. Or you're, you're taking them with you as you're, you're, you're heading out to go and do something. And they're on the roadside. And all they care about is, there's plenty of space. I want to run. They don't care about the cars that are coming on the road. They're not interested in the fact that <laughs> we're in a dangerous world. They can disappear at any time. They're not interested in all that. All they want to do is, Mom, Dad, why don't you just leave me alone? Let go of my hand and let me go. But you as a parent know <laughs> there, you're not going anywhere. You're staying right here with me. And many a times that is what God does for us. Yeah. He gives us statutes. He gives us rules. He gives us those things to, for our own good. But you know, very trickily, the devil many a times twists it. Makes us to begin to feel that God is too, he's too hard. He's too harsh. May we realize that just like that parent, he's looking out for our good. Yeah. It is for our own good. Otherwise, what was the danger? Because remember, they have never walked this place before. So they needed a guide. They needed someone who had gone before. That was God. If they did not take all these instructions from God as to form their foundation, that entering into the relationship with God, which they did at Horeb, otherwise, what would have happened? All the rejoicing. All the victories thus far, <laughs> despite all of that, there could be the real possibility, the very real possibility of never making it to Kenya. There could be the possibility of actually finishing it and ending it in the wilderness. That fiery, horrible wilderness that we just read about. 
There could be the possibility of them bleaching their bones in the wilderness or even returning to Egypt. Remember some of them, they came to that extent, they came to that place. They said, let us go back to Egypt. May God help us. Amen. That whatever happens on this way to heaven, we will never, Amen. never Amen. choose to return to Egypt. Amen. We're talking of spiritual Egypt. Yeah. Sin. The devil. <laughs> you see, there are many tricks the devil plays many a times. He will make one to forget the negatives, I call them. <laughs> the negatives of sin. The suffering. The horrors. He would just remind you of, ah, but remember, you, were, you used to be, you used to do this. You used to enjoy this. You, 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 are, you, you, you are not able, you are not allowed to do this anymore. <laughs> when you remember what you went through, your eyes will open. You will understand that, you know what, you can take your dirty stuff. I want to stay with Jesus. Amen. May God help us to do that. Amen. So, we must, in the same way today, Appreciate that on this spiritual journey to Mount Zion, as we're passing through this physical world, that there is very real danger in this world. Very real danger, not just physically. We're talking of spiritually. Because remember, we have a goal in mind. We have an end in sight. We have something that God has promised us. He has promised us to take us victoriously from here, if we will lean on him, if we will obey him, he has promised to take us to heaven yeah. and to take us to the new Jerusalem. Yeah. To take us to the pinnacle of it all, Mount Zion. Yeah. Oh, you have to be there. Yeah. I have to be there. Yeah. May God help us all to be there. Yeah. So, a firm foundation. How do we get on this foundation? Yeah. By getting into that relationship with Jesus Christ yeah. through salvation. Some call it the born-again experience. Some call it regeneration. Whichever you want to call it, but it is true. That definite, no-so-experiential, transactional thing that happens. Where, as you are praying, Lord, I confess my sins. I know I'm a sinner. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I know where I know. Lord, I tend to look down on people. Lord, I'm proud. Lord, people see me as a good person, but uh, I know myself. Please, just have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Wash me clean with your precious blood. That same blood you shed on the cross of Calvary for my salvation. Please, use it to wash me clean. And you will know when the work is done. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit himself will come down and witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, when it happens, you will know. Oh yes. oh, yes. When it happened to me, I knew. And what thrills my soul is that till today, it is still happening. Amen. When, when people pray through, sometimes on these altars of prayer, sometimes at camp meeting, wherever, and once they pray through, Nobody tells them. <laughs> They're the ones to tell you. And they tell you all right. Because, in fact, not only do they have to tell you, it becomes self-evident. Yeah. Immediately, you begin to see changes. Because that relationship is effectively a grafting of you from that Sodomic tree of the devil, of sin, of Satan, into God's kingdom, his tree. Now, because you have been cut off from the devil, you have been grafted. Do you understand what it means by grafted? You get a branch from a, maybe an apple tree. You put it, you cut a, 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 a splice in the orange tree, cut a bit off, attach that apple tree branch to the orange tree, and guess what? Just give it a little time. That apple branch will begin to grow oranges. Why? Because it is now attached to that orange tree. All the, 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 the characteristics of the tree from the root, from the foundation, it's going into that branch. Yeah. It's no more bearing apples. Oh, you know what? As a child of God, that is what has happened to you. God has taken you out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Yeah. That is why your life simply says it all. You know, many a times you're at work, you don't need to take, you, 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 many a times you don't even need to talk. Somebody will come around and say, pray for me. 
<laughs> I, was, I was surprised. I started a new job recently. And um, I don't know what, how the conversation came up or something. And I just heard one of my, uh, one of my work colleagues saying, that, yeah, you must have prayed very well at home. When, that's why that thing happened like that. You, because maybe there was some issue, and um, by the time I came back the next day, it was all sorted. He said, yeah, you prayed. I'm thinking, okay, I prayed. So you know I pray. <laughs> Amen. 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 May God help us. May, 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 may God just help us to bear those fruits. Yeah. And as we bear those fruits, remember, we're talking of how we get onto that foundation through salvation. God helps us to bear those fruits. And as we get grafted into Jesus Christ, he becomes our foundation. Yeah. And we begin to build for eternity. Yeah. We begin to build on this foundation for eternity. Remember, it is by choice. It is by choice. Remember that. You're being grafted and taken out of the kingdom of darkness into Jesus Christ's kingdom is by choice. You must decide. Jesus will not force you. On top of that, once you are now into the kingdom, and this is where a number of people seem to miss the point. Once you're now in the kingdom, it is still by choice what you build on that foundation. (laughs) Where we're going to tells us that no other foundation can any man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. But he then goes on to say, but if you like, whatever you build on it, a testing time is coming. Some will build gold. Some will build silver. Some will build precious stones. Remember, it's going to be tested by fire. On the other hand, some are going to build wood. They're building hay. They're building stubble. All on this foundation. (laughs) That's what they're building. By their lives, by how they take in the word of God, by how they apply themselves to what God has said. Thus saith the Lord. They're building We're all building. Anybody who has professed salvation, you've been genuinely saying, you're building for eternity. (laughs) Remember, the testing time is coming. So may God help you to build something of quality. Something that will stand. You can be sure of what is going to happen to the wood, the hay, the stubble. You see, with the gold, with the silver, etc., when they're put through fire, they actually come out better. Yeah. Do, you, do you get it? Yeah. But with the who, wood, <laughs> with the hay, <laughs> with the stubble, <laughs> what's going to happen? No. <laughs> it's going to finish. May God help you to build. Yeah. And build a right. <clears throat> That's where that what we read this morning comes in. We are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. As we read the Bible, we read the Acts of the Apostles. How did these people who were close to Jesus, how did they do it? We line our lives by it. We read the word. Oh, the Holy Spirit, as we pray, ministers to us. He speaks to us. Yeah, for you, that one, I want, that's the way I want you to go. That's what I want you to do. No, 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 no. Others may be doing it, but not for you, my baby. I want you this way. May God help us to line up. Amen. May God help us to line up. Amen. So as we build, we're building, we're building. Are you on that foundation? Are you on that foundation that will stand for eternity? If you are on that foundation, what are you building? What are you building? Is your own kind of building the building that, okay, when they say thanks, that means at least they're appreciating me. <laughs> you know, those kind of buildings, they're going to get burned up. They're like the wood, they're like the hay, they're like the stubble. Oh, yes, because guess what? The testing time is coming. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do when there's nobody to say thank you? Huh? May God help us build Amen. and build all right. Deuteronomy 4.9, what does that tell us? Part of how we can build and we should build. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. 
You build for yourself, you build for your family. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. And lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So what's happening there? You're building for yourself. You're building for eternity. Hmm. When we're talking of foundation, remember, this thing of foundation, it affects us spiritually. It affects us physically. Many a times we talk of foundation even in other things as well. In terms of marriage, in terms of uh, uh, studies, instead of other things. What, what are we trying to say? Make sure that your base is solid. May God help us to have that solid ground. You see, when we're saying check your foundation, make sure it's solid. As we, as we mentioned earlier, Jesus Christ, the everlasting foundation. Nothing can go wrong with him. No. But the issue is with us. You see, the house that is built on that foundation has to be fastened to that foundation. And the issue is how we make sure we are fastened to him, to Jesus Christ. Are you fastened to that foundation? Or oh, have things happened that have given you a bit of a shake? They've shaken you off the foundation. There's a bit of slippage. <laughs> You're slipping off. There's a bit of subsidence. In fact, you, 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 the whole building is because something has gone wrong. You know, as you said earlier, <laughs> once the foundation has a problem, everything on top of it will begin to, in fact, there will, there will be major problems. Cracks, burst pipes, all sorts of things because the foundation that should keep it stable is beginning to move around. And everything, all the load of the, of, the, of the building on top, they are no more stable. They're moving around the place. <laughs> May God help you to build your foundation. Amen. May God help me. <clears throat> Have you been cooled off? Let your zeal and joy of salvation is it now, it's becoming cool. What about um, your, I have doubts now started coming in. Those things you once believed. Those things that the Spirit of God convinced and convicted you of. Now it's, um, well, <laughs> watch out for attacks on your foundation. Psalm 11 verse 3 tells us, <laughs> for the children of God, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is a big problem. Watch out for attacks on your foundation. How can we watch out? 2 Corinthians 7 1 tells us, having therefore these promises. Oh, I wonder how many promises. How many promises do you know? How many promises have you dug out of the word of God? How many promises have you made personal? <laughs> I, I was uh, chuckling to myself earlier this morning when Sister Choma made, uh, as it were, a mistake. I suspect it wasn't quite a mistake. Yeah, that God has spoken good concerning Israel. She said, Chioma. Yeah, personalize it for yourself too. How many promises do you know? Huh? That first, second Corinthians 7 1 see, having therefore these promises, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. My God shall supply your need according to his riches in glory. I am the Lord that he led thee. I am that I am. I will not forsake thee. I will be with thee. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the fire, thou shalt not be consumed. Why? Because the Lord himself, he has said he will lead you. Having therefore these, pro these promises, Daily beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Why? Because there can be no other foundation than Jesus Christ. And he is a holy foundation. If it is going to last for eternity, it must be built on Jesus. Why is eternity so important, by the way? Foundation, not just for life, <laughs> but for eternity. 
My brother, my sister, how long is eternity? Have you ever asked yourself? And the reality of it is that some people are going to spend that same eternity, time without time, in either heaven, the eternal glory of God, the new Jerusalem rejoicing with God, or eternal hell, the lake of fire, burning forever and ever, without the option of release. Oh, that is terrifying. No, no, no. You know, part of the things that God used to speak to my heart to <laughs> bring me wise onto salvation was that even if I really wanted to do my own thing, even if I wanted to do what I want to do, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. But hold on. <laughs> Lake of fire. For how long? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Even common sense doesn't, doesn't agree with that. And yet, as we're seated here, as we're seated here this morning, everybody has eternity facing them, in front of them. May you decide for Jesus. How can we build on this foundation? Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, John 8, 31 and 32. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Why? Because First Samuel 16, 7 tells us, God is looking on the heart. God is looking on the heart. Why? Because this thing is a personal choice. It's a personal choice for the small one. For the child, for the adult, for the great one, for male, for female. It is a personal choice. May God help you to choose and choose a right. What is the personal choice? It's a personal choice to build on the sure foundation. To be wise. Because one day it will show out. Let's read together Matthew 7.24. Matthew 7.24. Therefore... Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. Who is talking here? Jesus. Listen carefully to what he's saying. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended. Didn't I tell you the testing time was coming? It will come. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and blew beat upon that house. <laughs> you see, brother, sister, <clears throat> it's not a curse. It's not, it's not a curse. It is a fact of life. Yeah. Things happen in life. Yes. Storms happen in life. <laughs> you don't have to actually apply for them. When you're sitting in your own little corner, quietly minding your business, it will look for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I didn't say you applied for it. No. I didn't say you asked for it. No. Storms happen. Yeah. So, the best you can do is prepare yourself. Yeah. What did Jesus say? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The storm came and beat on that house. And it fell not. <laughs> May you not fall. Amen. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Amen. 26, let's listen to this carefully. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not... shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended. <laughs> you see? The same storm. No, where, where, where you decide to build is your choice. <laughs> but the storm is still going to come. Yeah. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. Was it like the first house that stood sure? No. And it fell. It didn't only stay there. And great was the fall of it. May God not allow you to fall. Yeah. May your building for eternity not collapse. Yeah. Hmm. Amen. Who is the wise person Jesus is saying here? He said, he that hears, heareth, and doeth. Heareth plus doeth equals wise. You hear that? Heareth 
plus doeth equals wise. It was wise because by hearing and doing, they were building on the rock. Yeah. The rock that can only withstand storm. You see, many other people tried different foundations. Some tried the foundation of financial security. Some tried the foundation of marriage. Some tried the foundation of high societal, you know, they, they, they're in the higher echelons. But you see, every one of those things have been known to fail miserably. Yeah. Some, their own is medical science. They, that's their foundation. As far as they're concerned, there's nothing that can happen that cannot be taken care of. But guess what? The rich, they die. The poor, they die. Is it not, a, is it not strange to you that doctors also, they pass away? What am I trying to say? Let Jesus be your foundation. Yes. Do what he has told you to do. The wise built his house upon the rock. But the foolish man, like the foolish virgins, they did it their way. <laughs> they did it their way. Nah, it's, that's not the way I see it. I don't see it that way. Mm. The way I see it is like, <laughs> they've forgotten that. The way you see it is irrelevant. The way I see it is irrelevant. The storm is coming. And the storm is going to hit directly to your foundation. It will shake you to your root, to your foundation. And if your foundation is not Jesus Christ, if your foundation is not aligning by the word of Jesus Christ, by the word of God, by this holy writ, sorry, you're in trouble. May God help us. Amen. You know, those things that may seem small, insignificant, <laughs> may we not allow them to eat away our foundation. Amen. For no other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Let's read that together. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. <clears throat> For no other foundation... Can no, can, sorry, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work will be made manifest. <laughs> for the day, the day of the storm, the day of the test, and there's a final test coming, the rapture of the saints, the trumpet sound. For the day will declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire will try every man's work of what sort it is. Uh, I can even pretend to you. You can pretend to me. <laughs> but there is a day coming. <laughs> Bible says it will be declared. Not just revealed. <laughs> there is a difference between revealing something. There is a difference between declaring something. It will be declared. Of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Brother, sister, how are you building your foundation? How are you taking care of your foundation? Does your foundation need some underpinning? <laughs> have some things happened that have shaken you and literally almost cracked you to the core? You can come on down to these altars of prayer and ask the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, please strengthen me. Amen. Don't let me go back. Don't let me look back. Don't let me look down. Amen. Help me to keep looking up to you. Yes. That songwriter says, keep looking up. Thy God shall fight for thee. Amen. As we look up, Jesus will help us to make it. Amen. He will take us through to eternal heaven. Amen. May God bless you as you come and pray. Amen.
Dear Lord, we thank you for your promise that you will neither leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord God, for you are the only one that can lead us through the time of troubles, the, tri the time of trials, as the waters and the winds and the storms blow against our foundation and the building that we are put on it. Oh, Lord, we ask that you please make it to stand. Let not our bidding fall, oh Lord. Help us to stand until you take us to eternity. Pray for us this morning, oh God. Answer every prayer that is being offered unto you. Oh Lord, save this afternoon. Sanctify, oh Lord God, and baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. Thank you for answered prayers, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.